fluoroquinolones which type of drugs they are the name of the fluoroquinolones can be split into three parts fluoro plus quinoline plus o so what are the ring system they are having is the quinoline ring system so we can write the general structure of this fluoroquinolones like this and the ring system is nothing but the quinoline so we can start the numbering of this quinoline ring system from the nitrogen so this is the one two three four five six seven and eight now these fluoroquinolones are having a ketone group at the fourth position so we can call four one and they're having a fluorine group at the sixth position which increases the activity of these quinolines so these drugs can be written as six fluoroquinoline four ones or simply we can call fluoroquinolones and apart from these structural features all the fluoroquinolones are having a carboxylic acid moiety at the third position now we can write the common name of these fluoroquinolones as 6 fluoro 4 oxo the ketone now treated as 4 oxo because we are giving the preference to the carboxylic acid so 4 oxo quinoline 3 carboxylic acid so this is the common ring present in the all fluoroquinolones now let us see what are the different types of fluoroquinolones and how they act and what are the possible side effects drug interactions and what is the spectrum of activity of all these drugs generations of the fluoroquinolones we have a lot of fluoroquinolones in the market but all the fluoroquinolones are not available today because of their toxic reactions many of the fluoroquinolones produce the liver toxicity and few of the fluoroquinolones can increase the QT interval which may produce the torsi D point is because of such toxic reactions many of the fluoroquinolones are withdrawn from the market now let us see what are the fluoroquinolones which are withdrawn from the US market so few of the drugs include temofloxacin, gatifloxacin and trovofloxacin are withdrawn from the market because of the toxic reactions so based on the what are the drugs available today in the market the fluoroquinolones can be classified into four generations first generation second generation third generation and four generations and as we are passing from the first generation to the fourth generation the spectrum of activity is going to be changed first generation is the old generation and fourth generation is the new generation the old generation fluoroquinolones are effective against the gram negative infections but they are having the weak activity as we proceed to the new generation drugs they have the strong activity against the gram negative infections as well as they have extended activity towards the gram positive infections apart from these the new generation drugs are also useful in the treatment of atypical organisms as well as anaerobic organisms in this way the spectrum of the activity of fluoroquinolones is going to be extended from the gram negative to the gram positive organisms when we come from the old generation to the new generation this is just quite opposite to the penicillins the old generation penicillins are effective against the gram positive infections but as we come to the new generation of penicillins their activity is going to be extended towards the gram negative infections opposite to this the old generation fluoroquinolones are effective against the gram negative infections but as we come to the new generations their activity is going to be extended to the gram positive infections and even their activity is also extended towards the atypical as well as anaerobic organisms now let us discuss one by one what are the drugs included in the different types of generations now let us start with the first generation fluoroquinolones so this is the one of the first generation fluoroquinolone which is the nalidixic acid but actually if we observe the structure of the nalidixic acid it is having the nitrogen instead of the carbon at this position that means it is not having a quinoline ring instead it is having 1,8 naphthyridine ring system so nalidixic acid is not a fluoroquinolone but why it is classified as a first generation fluoroquinolone even it is not completely treated as a fluoroquinolone but still it is having the structural similarity with the fluoroquinolones and even it acts similarly as the fluoroquinolones that's why it can be classified as a first generation fluoroquinolone and this drug is particularly used in the treatment of urinary tract infections which is produced by gram negative organisms and within the gram negative organisms this drug is useful in the treatment of e coli infections and enterobacter infections klebsiella infections but this drug is not suitable in the treatment of pseudomonas infections so 
So nanodixic acid is the first drug that is developed in the quinoline category, which is nowadays confined for the treatment of urinary tract infections. But today we have the next generation drugs which are again used for the treatment of urinary tract infections. So let us go with the second generation fluoroquinolones. So within the second generation we can observe the first drug is the norfloxacin. This is the real fluoroquinolone where we can observe the fluorine group at the sixth position, ketone group at the fourth position and carboxylic acid at the third position. So this is the first fluoroquinolone which is in the all structural features. Similarly another drug is the ciprofloxacin. Again in the ciprofloxacin we can observe the fluorine group at the sixth position, ketone group at the fourth position and carboxylic acid at the third position. And what is the difference between the norfloxacin and ciprofloxacin? In the norfloxacin we can observe the ethyl group at the first position whereas in the ciprofloxacin we can observe a cyclopropyl group at the first position. So these two drugs are structurally almost similar and they differ only at the first position. Now norfloxacin and ciprofloxacin what is the spectrum of activity of these two drugs? As they are the second generation fluoroquinolones they are effective against the many of the gram negative infections particularly they are effective against the E. coli infections as well as the pseudomonas infections. We have seen that nanodixic acid is not effective against the pseudomonas infection but these drugs are effective against the pseudomonas infections. That means when we are going from the first to the second generation the spectrum of activity among the gram negative infections is going to be increased. And along with the increase in the spectrum of activity in the gram negative infections these drugs also effective against the atypical organisms. So these drugs are useful in the treatment of mycoplasma as well as chlamydia infections which produce the pneumonia in the patients. So norfloxacin and ciprofloxacin the second generation drugs which are having an extension of the activity towards the atypical organisms. But still these two drugs are having some limitations in the spectrum of activity. These second generation drugs are not effective against the MRSA methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus infection. This is one of the gram positive infection which is actually treated by methicillin but nowadays it is getting the resistance which we call MRSA methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. In such infections uh, these two drugs are not effective. Similarly these drugs are not effective against the streptococcus infections as well as enterococcus infections. That means second generation drugs are effective against the gram negative infections and their activity in, among the gram positive infections is somewhat limited. Now within the second generation we can observe another structure this is the ofloxacin. Ofloxacin is the structure which is having a connection between the groups at the first and eighth position so that it have a one more ring compared with the ciprofloxacin and norfloxacin. And what happens to the spectrum of activity? The spectrum of activity is going to be extended to the staphylococcus aureus infections. We have seen that ciprofloxacin is not effective against the MRSA but ofloxacin is effective against the staphylococcus aureus infections but still the ofloxacin is ineffective against the streptococcus infections. So when we come to the ofloxacin the activity is only extended towards the staphylococcus infections. Next one is the third generation fluoroquinolones. Among the third generation only one drug nowadays available is the levofloxacin. Levofloxacin is actually a levoisomer of the ofloxacin. Ofloxacin is optically active and its levoisomer we call levofloxacin. Now what is the spectrum of activity of this levofloxacin? Because it is a third generation now it is having the extended spectrum of activity. It is effective against the all types of gram negative infections and it is effective against the atypical organisms and it is effective against the gram positive infections. So gram positive infections like the staphylococcus aureus infection as well as streptococcus pneumonia infections can be treated by levofloxacin. So its activity is extended in the gram positive organisms. And again it is having one of the limitations in the activity. This levofloxacin is ineffective against the anaerobic organisms. So this limitation can be removed by the next generation fluoroquinolones. Now what is the fourth generation fluoroquinolone? So one of the drugs is the moxifloxacin. And other drugs include the delafloxacin and gemifloxacin. What is the spectrum of activity of this fourth generation? Now they are having the extended spectrum. Just like uh, third generation they are affected against the all gram negative infections, atypical organisms, gram positive infections and their activity is also extended towards the anaerobic organisms. So these are the fourth generation fluoroquinolones which are having an extended activity towards the 
Anaerobic Argan Gems.